you know, this fucking deal that I'm about to sign, barring me from the securities industry, barring me from Stratton, my home. <laughs> the fuck is that, you know? You know what? I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm fucking leaving! The show goes on! This is my home! They're gonna need to send in the National Guard a fucking SWAT team! Cause I ain't going nowhere! Fuck them! Welcome to Corium Concepts. Thanks for stopping by the channel tonight. If I can leave you some value, please hit that like button, share, leave a comment below. Just going to do a video tonight covering a couple topics. Corium had a great X space today with Cosmos Daily. Talk about that for a little bit. And we're going to touch on the XLS 40 amendment on the XRP ledger that Sologenix is talking about and expand on that. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Just about at that 1,000 subscriber mark, be giving away a great prize package of NFTs when we hit that goal. That was a great post by Salvo. We'll be talking about CZ Binance and his woes here with the law. Here's a look at the Wall Street Journal. Binance's chief admits violating a laundering law. So CZ's in a little bit of hot water. Some big fines, pled guilty to a bunch of crimes. New CEO is being shoveled in. So interesting times at Binance. We'll see where that leads to. Already talks of it becoming a more regulatory compliant organization with a new leader. One thing I want to touch on here is the super ledger. Corium's been talking about this. This is a great graphic to explain what they mean by super ledger. And basically it's combining the technologies of IBC, ISO 222, COSM WASM, smart tokens, and the XRPL bridge. So when you think of all those things combined and the power and utility it can provide, you can see what opportunity lies ahead with these protocols that we're interacting with here today. So yeah, they had a AMA here today with Cosmos Daily. It was really good uh, space, very informative. They talked about the uh, XRPL bridge, currently just a one-way bridge, but soon to be a two-way bridge. And I thought it was interesting because those daily was certainly pushing for some hope, some news of uh, airdrop coming to the way of the Cosmos community there. Didn't seem to get much support on that from the the team there, but uh, nor denial, but uh, he, he was sure trying hard, so give him credit for that. And uh, it was unfortunate it was on while I was working the nine to five, so I could, I could not attend. But I was so, so thankful Articulate got up there to speak and ask such a valuable question because it was certainly on the list of one of mine that I would have asked if I had the opportunity about the Soulbound tokens. So very exciting to hear the response to that and the fact that uh, they're basically here ready to utilize and very user-friendly as far as creating that feature on chain so good things coming ahead with that they obviously alluded to their, their upcoming events utilizing the proof of attendance soulbound tokens they spoke to the dexes utilizing the soulbound tokens so knowing who's behind the team at whelp i'm very excited to see what they plan to do with soulbound tokens on a dex they're building uh, very uh, intimate knowledge of IBC and its capabilities as they were definitely part of its development. Very powerful tool that they're putting out on our network, I am assuming. And the best way I was describing it to some people that were confused by or wondering what the Soulbound token was, was basically like a creating that whitelist, you know, just a safe way to interact with a, with a wallet, making sure that funds only go to where they're approved to go and nowhere else. And many use cases can you know, be spun off from that technology. So sky's the limit. They were asked at the end timeline of when to see some dApps built on the Corium ecosystem. Um, it would have been a great opportunity to give Rise a shout out. His NFT marketplace has been up and running on the Corium network for some time. But nonetheless, they expect the DEXs to go live here probably within a month or so. So uh, good to see some more use cases coming. You know, I think 
once you start seeing a few things pop up on there it, it's going to go fast after that and and uh, it won't be long that we'll have a fully functional Corium ecosystem to interact with the XRPL and the IBC. So during that podcast, uh, Giovanni says to um, search IBC dash solidity. So I did. This is what comes up. Conversation he had on that. I encourage you to listen to the podcast. He can obviously explain it far better than me, but this is obviously a very important tool for developers migrating to the IBC network that prefer to code in Solidity. So is there a good thread here? Let's take a quick look at that. 2023 is the year that IBC will expand to new blockchains, including Ethereum. Data Chain and Interchain Granted Team is working on IBC Solidity. The Solidity implementation of IBC aims to connect Ethereum to Cosmos. By using IBC Solidity, it is possible to facilitate the transfer of messages, tokens, and data across various blockchains via IBC, including Ethereum, EVM-compatible blockchains, and Enterprise Ethereum. Being EVM-compatible, IBC Solidity can be used to connect chains like BSC, Polygon, and Avalanche, and can be utilized in cross-chain bridges connecting these public chains. Data Chain plans to collaborate with partner companies in Japan and abroad to launch services in production environments using IBC Solidity, bringing IBC into the enterprise world, which was recently announced. Here's a post to their announcement. Take a look at that. Enable simultaneous transfers between multiple stable coins. There you go. That's a whole other rabbit hole we won't get into in this video here, but... Uh, for any of those that are interested, a lot of great information here. All right, and IBC is becoming a true standard of the blockchain interoperability. Read more on how Data Chain plan to utilize funding from this interchain to develop features and improvements to have production level utilization of IBC solidity. So this is very powerful because Corium is obviously connected via IBC just recently. We can head over to map of zones here and see what's going on. You can see actually the last 24 hours, um, or this is the weekly trend here, but uh, last 24 hours, we've had some activity here, $6,838, 1,800 transactions, 68 IBC transfers, got 542,500,000 on-chain supply, 14% inflation, stake in APRs at 30.2%. Got an unbounding period of seven days. 53 current validators out of possible 64. Okay, and what we came here to talk about here tonight. XLS 40 proposal aims to provide self-sovereign identity secured by the XRPL. Will decentralized identifier adoption be the next major step in tokenized revolution? Learn more. XLS 40 decentralized identity. The blockchain community is abuzz with the prospect of proposed XLS 40 feature, which could usher in a new era for digital identity on the XRP ledger. Ripple Labs development arm RippleX has unveiled groundbreaking initiative to integrate native support for decentralized identifiers based on World Wide Web Consortium, the W3C, standards. This move aims to provide standardized and interoperable solution for verifiable self-sovereign digital identities on the XRP ledger. In quotes, it says the XLS 40's emphasis on the W3C and DID V version 1.0 standard ensures a secure and compliant framework that could potentially be used for cross platform identity management via Sologenix institutional and decentralized arms and our cross chain initiatives. And that was quoted by Alberto Robles, a Sologenix tech manager. So, what are DIDs? Decentralized identifiers offer a solution to the challenges associated with centralized identifiers such as emails and usernames. Unlike traditional identifiers, DIDs provide a globally unique string of letters and numbers functioning as an independent and blockchain-based identifying address. This ensures ownership and control of data, reducing the risk of data breaches. DIDs also empower the users to digitally sign and issue verifiable credentials such as educational certificates facilitating instant and secure verification. Key features, the XLS 40 introduces a new DID method, outlining the format for XRP ledger DIDs, and defining the processes for their generation and management. This specification aligns with the W3C's standards. 
a data model and representation format for cryptographically verifiable digital credentials, which emphasizes persistence, global resolvability, cryptographic verifiability, and decentralization. All right. And a little bit more about Sologenic for those that don't know. Sologenic's regulated arm is deploying a platform with hybrid model for on-demand tokenization of assets. This platform facilitates trading between crypto and off-chain traditional assets such as stocks and ETFs. This institutional grade offering is designed for IRAs, brokerage houses, family offices, banks, and other financial institutions looking to tokenize real-world assets for their clients. Learn more at Sologenic.com. Head over here and look at what the uh, proposal is the abstract here self-sovereign identity defi defined as a lifetime portable digital identity that does not depend on any centralized authority requires a new class of identifier that fulfills the following four requirements persistence global resolvability cryptographic verifiability and decentralization w3c standardized decentralized identifiers are a new type of identifier that enable verifiable self-sovereign digital identity and are designed to be compatible with any distributed ledger or network in the context of digital identities w3c standards for dids and verifiable credentials are rapidly gaining traction especially inter-blockchain related domains in this document we propose to implement native support for w3c dids on the xrp ledger so this is just the nuts and bolts of what they plan on doing to implement that. If you're technical enough to want to know what all that means, I suggest you seek this document out and research it for the rest of us. It's just a sign of where things are going. And this is a draft of the uh, W3C community groups report, a primer for decentralized identifiers, an introduction to self-administered uh, self identifiers for curious people. And this was done November of 2021. At a superficial level, the IDs is simply a new type of globally unique identifier, but at a deeper level, DIDs are the core component of an entirely new layer of decentralized digital identity and public key infrastructure for the internet. This decentralized public key infrastructure could have as much impact on global cy cybersecurity and cyber privacy as a development of the SSL TLS protocol for encrypted web traffic, now the largest PKI in the world. So this is a big deal, guys. Like the Corium and Sologenic are all over this early. It's great to see. This primer is designed to give newcomers to DID architecture the background they need to understand, not just the DID specification, but the overall architecture for decentralized identity represented by the family of DID related applications currently under development. It covers the background on the origin of DIDs and the DID specification, how DIDs differ from other globally unique identifiers, how the syntax of DIDs can be adapted to work with decentralized networks, how DIDs resolve the DID documents containing public keys and service endpoints, the key role that DID methods play in the implementation of DID infrastructure, privacy considerations for the use of DIDs, and how DID infrastructure lays a foundation for verifiable credentials. DID methods define how DIDs work with a specific blockchain. All DID method specs must define the format and generation of the method spec identifier. Note that the method spec identifier string must be unique in the namespace of that DID method. So then I want to touch on the DID's verifiable credentials because this is, I think, where mass adoption is really going to come in once government forces you to have a digital ID, digital wallet, etc. DIDs are only the base layer of decentralized identity infrastructure. The next higher layer where most of the value is unlocked is verifiable credentials. This is a technical term for a digitally signed electronic credential that conforms to the interoperability standards being developed by the W3C Verifiable, verifiable Claims Working Group. DIDs can be used to identify various entities in the verifiable, verifiable credentials ecosystem such as issuers, holders, subjects, and verifiers. More generally, DIDs can be used as identifiers for people, devices, and organizations. So it's not just for people. 
it's for internet of things also so i live in british columbia canada and this has been on the government website for quite some time it's just never really talked about publicly but it's the bc wallet bc wallet is a smartphone app it lets you receive store and present digital credentials such as permits identities and licenses the focus of BC Wallet is to keep your information secure and confidential. Digital credentials in BC Wallet are highly tamper resistant and are only stored on your start phone, smartphone. The government is not told when, where, or how you use your BC Wallet, and BC Wallet only sends or receives information over secure, confidential connections. I like how they say tamper resistant instead of proof. Most people will not have a use for a BC Wallet right now. Don't worry, we will soon, they're saying. BC Wallet is in the app stores as an exploration of the technology. It does not support credentials that work within Apple Wallet or Google Wallet. BC Wallet and the technologies it uses are built with open source code that anyone can review. The technology behind digital credentials has been used since 2019 in Orgbook BC Searchable Res Registry of Organizations in British Columbia. So we can look at the technologies. What's it say there? Digital credential services. Our team offers services and tools to help people, businesses safely, securely, and confidently identify themselves and communicate online with government and beyond. So about person credential. The person credential allows British Columbian to prove who they are online easily and confidentially with information confirmed by the BC government. It's a digital credential and it's stored in a smartphone app called BC Wallet. It's currently an exploration stage and not generally available. Starting with BCEID in 2002, the government of British Columbia has continued to evolve identity online so it's safer and more secure for everyone to conduct their digital lives. And the person cred credential is our latest exploratory step in that journey. Benefits of person credential include it uses privacy preserving and tamper resistant technology. It can be validated by any service automatically in a few seconds without needing to confirm anything with the government. The owner of the person credential must approve every use, just as with BC Services Card app. They can also control the sharing of their personal information. It's based on open standards and technologies that anyone can review the code. A digital service that depends on knowing a person or who they claim to be could realize large savings in time and effort by trialing the person credential alongside existing identity solutions. It's provided as a service by the BC Digital Trust Team. Right, so... There's that, and then, so they already have a public directory of organizations registered in BC. Orgbook BC provides verified data about organizations, including business numbers, legal names, DBA names, BC registration status, select licenses, permises, permits, and some addresses. So it all ties together, guys. Like this mass adoption that we're waiting for, it's going to come out of necessity here in Canada when COVID came. I think 80% of the population had to adopt a digital um, identif identity for their uh, health records. And everybody just did it. Just whether they uh, used smartphones much before or not, they realized they needed it to travel, to go to the theater, to go to a restaurant, to go see their loved ones, to attend a funeral even. So um, it was just adopted because out of necessity. And I think the governments are going to push us that way as far as digital ID also. I know in British Columbia, the driver's license is going digital in 2025. So obviously they have all these tools in place ready to go for that. It's just a matter of time. So I'm pretty excited that Corium and Sologenic are uh, ahead of the curve here with Soulbound tokens and the DID W3C uh, standards and how they're incorporating it into their business plan, I think is gonna set all of us up for a very bright future indeed. Okay, and partner of the channel here, Zeev. Happy to say I'm gonna be having an interview with Dr. Ravi from Zeev here in the days ahead. I will be posting it very soon quite look forward to that he is a wealth of knowledge provides hundreds of hours of content on web3 on youtube and their social medias i encourage you to check them out uh, 
webinars, podcasts. Uh, he's all over the place and just sharing such great knowledge for people that want to learn about this space of ours called Web3. So on that theme, the post here from Zeev says, Real world asset tokenization has taken the world by storm in recent days. If you wish to learn about this brilliant use case of DeFi, tune into Dr. Ravi's masterclass on the 28th of November and educate yourself about tokenization, stablecoins, derivatives, and more. So you can register here. It's November 28th, Berlin time, 6.30. And I really encourage you to register for that event. I'm quite looking forward to it. So you've also posted here, if you're contemplating migrating your business to web from Web 2 to Web 3, here are the basic prerequisites to be aware of. Furthermore, simply click the link below and allow the experts at Zeev to handle the complete process of migrating your business from Web 2 to Web 3. Five prerequisites for businesses to migrate from Web 2 to Web 3. Number one, businesses can migrate their Web 2 applications to Web 3 by adopting blockchain technology. Okay, and RippleX posted here, why isn't anyone talking about this? A new XRPL learning portal course just dropped, and it's a good one. Take a deep dive into XRPL DeFi, safety and security, auto bridging, pathfinding, liquidity pools, and more. Let me take a look at that. Lots of educational content here also. There you go, two hour course for a deep dive into XRPL DeFi. If you don't have experience in DeFi with the AMMs and liquidity pools coming to the XRP ledger, hopefully at some point soon, I highly encourage you to get up to speed on that. It uh, can be very rewarding, but if you don't know what you're doing, it can also be very costly. Proceed with caution, learn to earn. Make sure you understand what you're getting into before you move any co tokens. All right, and speaking of learning, if you'd like to learn more about Corium, staking on the Corium network, running a validator, check out coriumcommunitydao.com, our website here. It's got a way to contact us. All the information about us, our white paper, what we're hoping to build with our DAO, really need the community support to help build that and look forward to seeing where that can go link tree in the description below it's got links to all the important things there if we provided you some value here today please like share the video if you have any questions or comments be sure to drop them below and subscribe if you haven't already some fantastic prizes we're only about two dozen away from giving away a great bunch of nfts and rewards and utility and physical items that come with them thanks again see you in the morning for the morning market report Peace and prosperity to you all.